what are you doing, Tara? I want to get a shirt, a Fourth of July shirt. Yeah. So I'm looking, I'm looking on Etsy. All right. I'm hoping I could find something not made in China. <laughs> You're looking for the Happy Easter shirt. No, I found that, which is hilarious. I won't wear that, but I like this one that's the American flag and the stripes are the the names of the states written out. Nice. I'll get us matching ones later when I'm done, though. When we're done. Sure, I'll yeah. take that. Get one? Yeah. yeah. Cool. Look at the content of my mocha compared to yours. What do you mean? The color. Look at it. Well, yours is a brevet. Yeah. Mine's made with half and half. Yeah. Don't make me correct you. John and Tara podcast <laughs> number something around above 120. I forget which one this is, but 124. No. Uh, no, I no. don't know. You're the one. You're the one keeping track of that. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for doing that, by the way. I mean, I like details, but that's one detail that. Yeah. I don't care. You for. don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, welcome, John and Tara podcast. Subscribe. Like, share. Don't worry about liking. Don't worry about that. Like it if you like it, but subscribe, Mm -hmm. right? So that you can tell if you like it. You gotta watch several. And if you wanna cook. Because Tara is an acquired taste. I mean, (laughs) I'm just, I'm just saying. Thankfully you acquired the taste. I did. You had the patience and. You gotta be around her for a little bit. You gotta listen to what she says, you know, and then you gotta find some reasons why she says what she says. And then, and you gotta get over the offensive things she says, so. I am actually really grateful. Actually, truthfully, I am grateful that you stuck around long enough and you love me enough that you have put up with my BS. <laughs> because it's very particular. There's been a little bit. Yeah. I'm not, not complaining at all. I mean, there's some, some standard woman BS that well, every, I came Well, every with. woman has that. It's, yeah. it's standard. Yeah. And then there's the particular BS of the particular person. Uh, yeah. yeah. So... Thank you for loving me enough to, (laughs) but you, I would say you don't necessarily put up with it. You are like, okay, that's funny or that's not funny. A real man. I'm a real man. And you'll be like, okay, that's enough. Think I could hang out with the generals? Think I could be with the alphas? I think you could be the president. I I don't think I'd do that. No? No. I got my water in my coffee mug. Because it's hot oh, out. Oh, you got your flag. It's hot out here today. Represent. <clears throat> yeah, I got a... I didn't get it for the 4th of July. I mean, if you cut me open, I'm... My, red, white, and blue. My bones over. are red, white, and blue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm yeah. the sun on my neck already. Oh, but it's going to go behind the tree here in a minute, so... Okay. It'll be okay. I'll just... I'll do this One for minute. you. I'll just put my hand right here. Thank you. I'll shield you from the sun. I'll protect you, Tara. Thank you. Yeah. That's what a real man does. I'll take the burn. I see that you're matchy-matchy with me today. I am. I'm wearing a shirt underneath because we're going to go bike riding. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know if that shirt would look good on video. I thought you were trying to Because I don't want to. I don't want to zip it down and show my chest hairs. Too sexy. I'm too, too sexy, sexy for my... Okay, so yeah. I don't know what we're talking about. It's our morning talk. What is one thing that's on your mind? And I'll tell you one thing that's on my mind. Well, I told you one thing already. I have been thinking lately how fortunate I am actually that I did not come into this relationship perfect as a perfect woman. Okay, I'm going to stop you right there. Yeah? We're not going to make this about your faults because I have to live with them and I don't want to talk about them. (laughs) <laughs> it's already enough just, to have to deal with Just kidding, them. just kidding. We're not going to make a podcast about <laughs> any problems with you because there are no problems with you. I have no problems with you. Well, we don't have to name them. I'm just saying I, I can, <laughs> I can be grateful. I am grateful that you know instead of being like, woman, that's enough. We're done. You know. Why would I say that? Well, you could have. Well, the, okay. We'll get into a few of your things, right? Okay, not specifically, but just particular, particularly some things, right? Yeah. So you you have you have general woman things, right? Women worry. Women generally want more than what they have, and they're generally neurotic about stuff in life, and there that's not a problem. It just it just is, right? I'm a man. 
I'm generally single-minded when I'm doing things. I'm generally kind of just a grunt, kind of like, oh, I'm going to do it this way, and, you know, I'll go after something, and if it takes me another, you know, 60 minutes to figure out I should have done it a different way, then I'll do it a different way. And I'll, I won't be upset about it. I'll just change, and I'll go, okay, well, next time I'll make sure that I do it the way that I just thought about doing it this time, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm not, I don't get upset about it. Um, I don't overthink things because I'm a guy. You overthink things because you're a woman um, and you have a general caretaking quality about you, whereas I have a kick the mf -er out mentality, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Put your water in the shade there a little Thank bit. You. I don't know if you know, but I ate that piece of pie already. <laughs> the whole thing. <laughs> wow. Did you taste it? Peach pie. Oh, yes. <laughs> that's why. Holy crap. That was good. Good. It was really good. Um, so, the, in general, that's just the way it is. And part of the reason we do these talks with each other and, and on camera is so that younger people, older people, anybody that's having a relationship issue can, can understand and feel that they could, they're kind of being heard, right? Because I'll say things, guys will tell me, man, that was so awesome you said that, that's so true. You, you'll say things, you were just on somebody else's podcast the other day, and they're, they're all like, wow, that's so great that you're saying the things you're saying, you know, you're, you're right. And then you had an example of you being involved in a, in a, familial relationship with somebody that had a certain personality disorder and you described it and they were like yeah that's a problem and you're like yeah it's a major problem yeah you know from a different perspective right yeah. so it helps to share and talk and be part of a discussion it doesn't help to over complicate to overthink and at some point you know you just got to say well if the person's gonna be that that way then we can't be around them you know so, women tend to hang on to that a little longer than they should you know not kicking the person out well that's why i don't mind us bringing up examples i mean you we kind of have an unspoken rule about what type of examples we'll use at least on not paid the on the free version right mm -hmm. um We'll, we'll have some private talks and seminars and stuff where we, there's other stories that we can share. Because it, it is primarily in life through the examples that we learn. And if we don't learn through other people's examples, we'll likely learn it through our own tough experiences. <laughs> if that's a lesson that we're supposed to learn. And so what I hear uh, often, because I listen to stuff out, out in the dating relationship realm, is, you know, guys coaching guys you know like don't put up with this and I was like boy if John had been listening to this kind of stuff and taking it to heart when we were first together he might not be with me and so in in the in one vein where I understand what they're trying to do is like set guidelines you know that's how you you learn right it is you have to set boundaries yeah. and learn those boundaries but then I, th I thought to myself thankfully you had enough experience in life to know what a what you could handle you had been through a number of experiences to be able to handle things better and then also you really did set the boundaries for our own relationship well I understand why these guys are talking like they're talking because a lot of them did not have good role male role models growing up yeah and so and we're not just talking about one race of people we're talking about everybody the people online it's ubiquitous how many people are online saying these things but they're coming from a position of having been hurt or having been yeah. taken advantage of well the first thing is you are allowing yourself to be hurt you're putting yourself in a position where a person can hurt you and you're probably walking into it seeing that you're gonna get hurt or it's gonna be tough but you're willing to make trade-offs right guys are all about compromise right guys compromise their safety for something they want, they compromise their financial well-being for something they want. They they will always be weighing out these things, right? And that's taught to you by competent men. Empathy is taught by competent men. If financial uh, understanding or financial acuity, your, your thought process about finances is taught by competent men. Your relationship you know, whether you saw a guy in a relationship that didn't talk or talked a lot, 
you, you're going to learn from that, right? And that's how guys learn. Um, a lot of guys are raised by single mothers and they have a lot of uh, issues because of that because a woman cannot raise a strong, competent male. And, and I'm, not, I'm not saying they shouldn't try, I'm not saying they won't get some good qualities, but men have to have good male role models. And these guys are always like, well, you know, when I was married, this, and when I had this girlfriend, that, and, uh, and I'm never going to put up with that again. And that's not how, that's not how you do it. You do it by being in a relationship, you know, finding somebody to talk to, make sure you're compatible on multiple levels, right? And then developing a, a, a sort of, first you're acquainted, you develop kind of a friendship, kind of you're, you know, there's a dialogue and then maybe go out on a date, you know? Or if you go out on a date first, then start doing the, the, the friend relational thing, right? Like you go out to a park, you go to the zoo, you go to a fair, you go, you know, mm -hmm. you go to your church, you go to your wherever, right? And, and you're, you're seeing how that person interacts in public with multiple scenarios. That's what I would do. Most of these people, they find someone, then they try and sequester them and then they keep them locked up or, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry. I let you out of the closet every day. So, you know, it's like. <laughs> you don't even have to lock the door at this point. Or I the just tower. Know, I just know to stay inside. Well, you're like, an, you're, you're like an elephant, you know. An elephant. Yeah, you know how they, they tie elephants up with chains when they're younger because they try to break free. And as yeah. they get older, they just put a, a string around their leg because they're used to it. Mm -hmm. No, I, you're in the tower. You, you don't, I don't actually put you in the closet. Don't I have to. I need to grow my hair out longer, though. Don't That's how I anymore. get out, right? That's no. how the story ends. No, no, no. <laughs> no, I'll walk you down the stairs. So the the, the idea <laughs> where are the stairs it's usually the ones that carry you down <laughs> oh. yeah you don't know they're there <laughs> carry you up and down the stairs but if you go into a relationship from a position of pain and suffering and and what you don't want you're you're gonna be a failure you, you don't start a business based on what you don't want you don't start I mean you might not want to be poor and you start a business and that's fine Maybe that's that could be that could be true yeah mm -hmm. right um, but you also have, you have to get to the point of what you want. You have to get to the point of what your customers want. You have to get to the point of what your spouse wants. You have to get, there's, there's a yin and a yang to everything. There's the other side of everything, right? And like you talk about archetypes, there's the good side and the bad side. You talk about numerology and the numbers, there's the positive and the negative side. And we need to be aware of that. You know, the things that we don't want, generally we walk away from things but we we always want to be walking towards what we want instead of away from what we don't want you want to be playing to win instead of playing not to lose and that's I think more important than you know these guys talking about how this girl slighted them you know the you know I dated her and she cheated on me or she spent all my money or she blah 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 you know it's like that's okay that person wasn't for you yeah. that doesn't define the rest of your life that's why when we got together, I never said, oh, my ex did this, and if you do that, I'm not blah, blah, blah. You know, I was just like, hey, Tara, I love you. There's something you're doing that I don't appreciate, and or, or even at a higher level, or something you're doing I can't live with. Here's what you're doing. Here's what I'd like you to do, and what do you think? And you're like, well, okay, I didn't realize I was doing that. Because well, you I wouldn't necessarily say, what do you think? You'd probably leave more of a space for me to respond. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, because that's an important but detail. But I, I did start out with, I love you, I want to be in a relationship Absolutely. with you, but this is happening and... A wonderful approach. Yeah. Well, it, it you get the security of feeling that I, I want to be with you, and I knew you wanted to be with me. It wasn't like, do you want to be with me? I want to be with you. Now that we both want to be together, let's have a conversation, yeah. you know, because I wasn't insecure. and. A man just is or isn't insecure. He's either secure or he's insecure. And if he's secure, he's secure in all areas because he's he's laid out a framework, he's thought about things to the point where, okay, I know what I'm doing in these areas. And he's not doing what a billionaire does generally. He's not doing what a millionaire does even. He's not doing maybe even what a competent person does in that area, but he's doing his best right mm -hmm. and if a guy's doing his best he feels very confident so that's something for these guys online that are talking about all the all their past problems 
you know, if you talk about them, they're going to continue. So there is one big red flag that I know in hindsight that you dealt with, and I'd I'd like to go back and hear your perspective. So when we, it was early on when we were together, you actually came to my graduation party. This would have been really soon. I don't know if we were officially we were no, we were no. almost no. officially dating. No, we were getting close. You invited me. Yep. I and came, came over. Yes. And when you came into the garage, you know, because I was kind of, that's typical of graduation parties. You enter in the garage or... Yeah, usually the, the, the trough of pop or whatever, or the table of food is in the garage, you know, that kind of stuff. And when you got into the house, because the kitchen's right off the, the garage, yeah. apparently my mom said, did you meet my mother? Isn't she, what did she say? <sighs> yeah. Well, anyways, I walked in, she said, did you, did you see my mother out there? Isn't she horrible? Yes. Yeah. So that's a really big red flag and you knew it. Well, what? for those online, there was BPD in your family, borderline personality disorder. Which we didn't know at the time. Well, <laughs> I had read the DSMR too, and I'd read all the, I'd read psychological literature. So and, my question is though, why didn't you but, just like leave? But a person just go psh, right a, out the door. A person's first comment, or their, or even some some questionable behavior, is on them. It's you know I don't walk around and go, oh that person said something. I better run. I better get out of here, because I'm a man. I'm not, and I and I was there. I hadn't seen you yet, right? I got invited there by you. I came to see you. Um, I didn't know who your mother was. She she knew who I was. Oh no, I had oh. met her once. You'd met her, but it was different because she was coming into your school. Yeah, I met her and once. So you might not have been able to pick her out. Yeah, I might have realized who she was once she started talking, but it wasn't like, "Hi, I'm Linda. I'm Tara's mom. I met you before." It was just, "Wow," you yeah. know. And I was like, "Huh," you know. But you weren't that way. You didn't come come into class and that type of stuff and just start mouthing off and start telling everybody stuff and try to be the center of attention and you know you know I'm different than my dad I'm different than my mom you're different than your mom and dad you know we have you know everybody's an individual and we have to treat people like individuals right and so you know if I walked in and seen somebody in the room a guy who was roughly your age I didn't assume that was your boyfriend you know I, I'm and I don't walk through life just assuming a bunch of shit you know I'm just experiencing things being aware of the environment but just going okay you know it's, everything's cool you know grab a little bottle of pop out of the out of the stock tank i said trough earlier but a stock tank is something that holds water for cattle or horses and out here in minnesota in the country we fill them up with water and ice and dump cases of bottles of pop in there and for big parties and stuff like that and so yeah. you know you you just do your thing you just get in involved in what's going on say oh no i didn't oh wow that's that's too bad so it sounds <laughs> you know? like you're saying you would observe the environment like in yeah, martial yeah. arts yeah. you know if if there's a, a bar fight brewing if you one don't have person, to get involved yeah, yeah you don't have to assume right away that that one troublemaker yeah. is going to yeah there's a bar if there's a bar fight you can just watch it i mean real life ufc you know it's Kind of fun well that's one of the <laughs> things i'm saying is I've, I've listened to these things I'm like wow good thing like john had the insight the wherewithal the skill also to deal with me because i coming from that environment when we met i was 18 and and i i knew a lot for an 18 year old but still so inexperienced in life and if you had just you know, we, we weren't officially dating yet, but if you had just kind of ghosted me after that experience at my at my graduation, I would have been I wouldn't have known. You know, was, I'm not that you, rude either. You gave me I'm, the opportunity also by giving me the information. You didn't just let it gloss over. You didn't gloss over it. Mm. We had probably later that day or in, within a couple days. Well, we weren't officially dating yet, but no. you did bring up things like that to me and and. We Green. did. I didn't have designs on you at that point. You had designs on me. Well, sure. You know, like <laughs> the was, opportunity might be there. So I, I was invited as, as a martial arts instructor. You get invited to everything, right? 
and you can't go to everything, so you choose where but you, you go. you went to my party. I did. I, I did go to your party. I went to other, other people's parties. I went to other graduations. Did you go I to went, other high school graduation parties? <laughs> I didn't go to any other young ladies' <laughs> high school graduations. No, I didn't. I didn't. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think at that point... You were handing out flyers, and you were. We were doing an exchange for. I gave you a discount on classes if you um, would hand out flyers. At that point, we had. Uh, you had just gotten back from Colorado and your NLP immersion. No, because you lived with me after that. That's when you moved in. Okay, then it was right before that. Okay. Must have been right before that. Yeah. So we were just starting to get... And we were all serious. in after I came back from Colorado yep. because you were in my apartment. Yep. You, I was all in. <laughs> you moved I don't in. Know about you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were dating before I left, so... So that was, it was a tight time frame because yeah. I think my graduation was... It was after graduation, before Alicia left to go back to Italy. Yeah. And then you left... I mean, it was all kinds of arrivals yep. and departures. It was yep. quite a time. Yeah. So... It, as I've like, it's worth reiterating. I'm so grateful that you know that pattern continued. So you not that's just one really poignant instance where you know you didn't just ditch me because of well, that. Well, here's one what thing. I'm going to say for you. Okay. Okay. I want you to stop being outwardly, openly, verbally grateful. I want you to stop with that because gratitude should just be general at this point. And I'm, I realize you're saying this I'm, for the camera so that people that. understand. Right. However, you chose well. Mm -hmm. Your first choice for a husband, person to get engaged to, you have now had over 20 years of marriage you've had an extremely successful relationship with. You chose very well. Mm -hmm. So out of, you, out of the chaos of what ha happened with your family and that kind of stuff, you came out a major victor. You, you have a good head on your shoulders. You are, um, you're a calm person, you know, more now than you used to be. You used to have your moments, right? And every young lady does <coughs> moments of anxiety, moments of frustration, you know, not knowing what to do not knowing who to trust and we've gone through our things where you didn't trust me on certain things financially and that kind of stuff and and it's all understandable Un until you go through it the first time the problem is when when you not you but when a, you start dealing with a problem and the per and a person can't adapt right that's when there's an issue yeah when a person can't can't take the strategies in their mind that they use that cause them problems and start to shift them so that they can not have issues and so, not worry about the same things over and over and over and over again. And early in our relationship, you read Dale Carnegie's How to Stop Worrying and Start Living. And that book was, I think, was very pivotal. I had to read for it you. several times and I yeah. have reminders in my calendar about yeah. it. Yeah. So I've used the analogy before. So you're a former racer and me not. <laughs> and and even though I've been on both. We should say motocross and snowcross. Okay. You know, we Moto should say that out be loud specific. because so that people don't think I'm like a I'm like a bicycle racer or I mean mountain bikes but not road bikes, you know, that kind of thing. So your body is used to those, you know, hard corners, turns, acceleration and mine not you know the most i got was riding my own three-wheeler or being on the boat and you know skiing and stuff like that really comparatively vastly different mm -hmm. and so the comparison is similarly with how you uh, do business and handle money uh, entrepreneur like where I'm on the other end of the spectrum where I grew up in a family where my parents both had jobs and you know you save this amount of money, you budget this amount of money and this goes into the 401k, yeah. you know very regimented right? And yeah. and so when we first got together when I got in a vehicle with you, you drive like a racer and I would literally be hanging on whether I needed to or not. It felt like me, to me, like we were on a racetrack when you were, <laughs> when you were probably Sorry. not at all. <laughs> and, but that's a perfect yeah, no, analogy. Yeah, no, I, I don't, I don't, I mean, maybe, maybe moves, lane changes and things or corners or whatever, 
but it wasn't like I was racing the vehicle. No, it, you weren't racing the vehicle. It might have just been more um, definitive than other people that you've ridden with. Totally, totally. <laughs> and <laughs> and so similarly, how you would handle money and business felt like that <clears throat> internally. Well, that's not because of being a racer. That's because of being an entrepreneur. I, I'm making <clears throat> yeah. those correlatives yeah. because it, for many years, you saw me. I'm going to put words in your mouth as just being worried and you know not understanding business yeah. and there is that but it's also what you're used to right you um, forget the wording you used earlier but it's your conditioning mm. right mm. and so my conditioning was very different and you talked about being able to adjust I had to I had to learn how to adjust and you, but it's hard for a person to adjust from being on the two end of the spectrum to the eight, nine, and 10, just by jumping. Mm -hmm. it, usually there's a gradient, right? Unfortunately, I was young enough also to be more plastic in my in my mind. Well, it took a while because if, if you're a business owner, you know that you, know, you need to spend a certain amount of money. Like if I would have a job come in and I have to buy materials and all these things, I might have a, a $40,000 job come in and I'm gonna spend you know, 16,000 on, on employees, you know, overhead wages, uh, t tooling materials. Right. And that's if everything goes well, if, right. if everything goes wrong the first time it's, it's could be double that amount. Mm -hmm. Now I'm spending $32,000 on a $40,000 job. So yeah. you can have a million dollar PO and you can make 800 grand, or you can have a million dollar PO and you can make a hundred grand. A hundred grand might sound like a lot to people, but a hundred grand is nothing on a million dollar PO. And it's usually now you've lost money and you're trying to catch up over the rest of the year. So um, if people see a lot of money in a business owner's bank account, it's because they have a lot of cash flow and rollover and overhead that they have to pay for and and move. And so that that's such a we've talked about it it's such a hard thing to teach it's such a hard it's it's taught over time yeah right with me it was taught over time about you know running my own businesses basically since i was 12 years old and that was just me just mowing lawns and shoveling snow and raking yards and doing little odd you know picking up sticks in old ladies yards and going to the local neighborhood grocery store and bringing back groceries and making three bucks you know whatever but you you, you learn over time that money is just a tool, just like a drill is a tool, you know? And you don't take that drill and put it in the drawer and leave it there for 20 years. You use it so that you can do things with it. And in the society and in the world we live in, everybody that is part of, and a lot of people that aren't part of what you're doing is pulling off of that resource, right? So I go and buy something, and not only do I buy that thing, have to get it, have to have the knowledge to utilize it, but I pay taxes on it, right? And then if I hand it to an employee and he breaks it, now I have to buy a new one, you know? So it's, it's all these things are just pulling on, on your overhead. And, and so you learn, do it quick, you know, make decisions fast, get things done quickly. Don't ask anybody any, any favors if you don't need to. Don't tell anybody what you're doing, you know, just go after it. And being in so you know being in relationships that i've been in and having um almost said so many relationships but it is relatively you know a decent amount of relationships that that i tried to have like having a new relationship i wanted to protect it right i didn't want to involve you in in everything i was doing because then everything that all the stress that comes with all of those things are involved too, right? And not only the stress I'm going through, but the stress you start feeling because you're like, you know, we're, we didn't buy groceries last week. You just bought a $150,000 machine, <laughs> you know? And it's like, yeah, <laughs> you know, I, I didn't take $150,000 and put it into a machine, but I had to have a $15,000 down payment. And now I got a monthly payment and now... You know, and to explain all that stuff, but if this machine is running every day, I'll make, you know, twelve hundred to four thousand dollars a day off of it, and 
that's what I'm doing. And because then what would have came in on the end of it is you would have been, how much did you make today on the machine? How much did you make today? You know, it would have just been more repetition, things I couldn't deal with. I knew that I was going to deal with it someday, but I wanted to deal with it down the road. And I did deal with it. You know, you, you've chided me multiple times for not including you in earlier and all these things. And, and that's just out of misunderstanding. I'm not upset at you for it. It's just like, well, what, what could I have done earlier? I don't know because I had never done what I was doing before in, in business that I was doing business in and never did it with you. So I didn't know how you could handle it, how you'd react. We were dealing with a lot of other things on your end with your parents, your family, that kind of stuff. And I didn't see that there needed to be another addition to that, whether it was a positive or a negative addition. So, so yeah, I, I do appreciate you being, having gratitude or being grateful, you know, that I put up with you, but I wasn't putting up with, I wasn't putting up with anything that was harder than what I was doing other places. You know, it's, it's, it, the stress for a guy is a continuum. You know, it's, it's like, okay, I'm at a 90% stress level. It doesn't matter. Anything I add is going to be at 90% because I'm at 90%. It's not like, oh shit, here comes my mother-in-law. Oh shit, here comes my, my dad. Oh shit, here comes my son or my neighbor or whatever. It's just like, I'm at this level right here <laughs> and I'm dealing with everything through those eyes. Right. Yeah. I, I put on the red sunglasses, so I'm seeing red, and everything I deal with, I'm seeing red. And so that's how guys do it, right? Guys aren't, guys aren't like, and we don't throw our stress on anything. You know, we're just dealing with, I'm quick, bam, 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 dealing with this, dealing with that, dealing with this. And if I somehow see that I maybe said something funky to someone I'm dealing with two weeks later, I'm like, hey man, sorry about a couple weeks ago, I... You know, I was going through some shit and the dude will say, yeah, I saw that, man, yeah, no big deal. No, no sweat, bro, <laughs> you know? So, yeah, I'm not, man, I've had nothing but heaven with you. I mean, compared to other relationships. I've, it's been, it's been a, a wonderful ride up to this point and we're only getting better. We're only moving forward at a more rapid pace. We're only, you know, our, our knowledge in our relationship and how to have a good relationship is phenomenal. You know, it's, and I see it as second to none. I, even my parents, my parents, longest standing marriage that I know of only have been with each other, started dating early in high school. And back then that was, you know, 60 years ago people weren't just hooking up, you know, then, and, and so they've only been with each other. Don't drink, don't smoke. Well, every now and then a, a wine cooler or a, a glass of, uh, Apple cider, Riesling. Cider. Yeah. yeah a glass cider. of hard cider or Riesling, but they yeah. don't drink on a regular basis. Yeah. Don't swear. Don't fight. Don't argue if they have a, if they have a, to discuss something, they don't do it in front of other people. Um, and honestly, I think our relationship is better than theirs. So that's because when we fight, they're great. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if they argue how they make up, but you know, <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm very pleased with where we're at. I'm happy with where we're going. What and do you think that I've done in our relationship that has really helped our, our relationship to progress either a specific thing or a character trait? Well, first of all, you stuck around. Right. Yeah. You haven't gone outside our relationship, although we've gone to marriage counseling a couple times. You've gone to a counselor on your own because of some family stuff, and I'm sure you talked about me too. Um, I don't have any desire to be there and listen. Uh, You're like, I've heard it all. <laughs> I don't, I don't be, have a desire to be there in front of a shrink and listen. You know, our problems aren't to the level where a shrink would actually help us, you know, and they, they would only complicate things. And um, people might scoff at that, but I don't care. Uh, it, we don't have any problems that I'm willing to go to anybody else about them, or do I think that we need to? I don't. I don't. Um, we've dealt with so many things together. Uh, so you stuck around. You didn't cheat. You didn't 
uh, you didn't drag me kicking and screaming. I did go to marriage counseling reticently. Um, it didn't work out. Uh, obviously, you know, the counselor wouldn't want to be married to me, as she said. <laughs> That's what, yeah. um, which is was the most super unprofessional thing that I'd ever heard. Yeah. Um, and ridiculous. Uh, obviously, I turned her on. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I just think that uh, your performance and, and you you've read our entire relationship. We both read, but you've read. And now you are doing your Bible study every morning, um, researching, learning, figuring stuff out discussing things with me debating things about do you think this do you think that what about this what about that um and you follow my lead i mean i know the bible very well and i know the principles and and i know the spirit i know the metaphysical people and i'm i'm right there with you and i understand seeking and in seeking, you find answers, and they're not always in the book you're reading. They're not always in the experience you have. Sometimes they're just they're direct guidance and, and manifestation of spirit in your life. And if you're seeking, you're on the right path. You know, I don't mean seeking wealth or seeking, you know, whatever earthly things. I mean spiritual things. I had a, a bit of epiphany a couple days ago. You know, there's definitely the talk about, it makes sense, you know, if a woman doesn't have a good relationship with her father, she can't have a good relationship with a man. And I had kind of a realization on a, on a more personal level, just thinking, you know, even when things were falling apart in my family of origin, I was still trying to make things work. You know, like I was going to counseling with whoever would go with me and paying for it even if I couldn't afford it and and the the only one who at that point who would go to counseling with me was my dad but without getting into details might get I, noisy here in a second the epiphany to cut to the chase the epiphany was I think that that relationship a woman has with her dad goes back to when she was a girl yeah and that you innately want to please your dad you know if the mom doesn't ruin it and and is is tremendously bitter against the dad but even sometimes still so you you want to be that companion to your dad even if the mom is that way I don't think that can completely ruin it but if the dad's not around you can't do that and I think that desire carries forward into your relationship to want to please and be there with your man well I think the person never has to please their mom because the mom is always saying things like you're you can do anything you're wonderful even when you mess up and you and you do something you, you don't win the baseball game your mom still says you're a winner to me you know the dad says yeah you didn't work hard enough you know, you, you're, you remember when I said you needed to train and you didn't? There well, you go. Now, now you're dealing with the repercussions. Remember so, did you, when you didn't want to practice grounders? Well, that one went right through your legs. Right. You could have gotten it. Right. Bounced over your head, went through your legs. You know, you didn't pay attention. You closed your eyes when it came to you. If you had practiced, you wouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. You know, that kind of stuff. And I think that um, even if your dad's not around, you still want to perform and show him that you performed because everybody knows that that's the that's even, even ricky bobby ricky bobby is <laughs> with just so many races Daddy. all those years had tickets for him at the counter <laughs> that's a mountain line daddy <laughs> get in that car ricky you drive with that mountain line you you're not that first mile. you're last uh, yeah what what do you mean I said that to you? That's stupid. <laughs> if you're second, you're second. <laughs> you still get a trophy. <laughs> I raced my entire life, Daddy. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Yeah. But it's archetypal, right? <laughs> it's right. it's they're showing in that movie that, you know, you're you want to perform for your dad and 
that's fine. It, you know, and if you don't like your dad, you still do. You know, you're still in the back of your mind. You're like, well, if he finds out that I'm better than him, you know, it, it's still <laughs> it's still there. You know, I've known guys like that. They just hate their dad, and their and the and their commentary is, you know, I'm better than my dad. I make better decisions. I do this better. You know, I stuck around with my kids or you know whatever. Mm -hmm. You're still trying to perform for your dad. Um, they turn it into a competition. Yeah, it's it's better to just admit it and deal with what it is and then become a better man. Not better than your dad, but better than you were the other day or better than you thought you could be. So yeah, I'm again, I'm, gl I'm glad you're grateful and I'm glad you realize and see, you know, the reality of, of what has happened. I think unlike many women, you are actually seeking truth and so there's truth that lies in your own behaviors the way that they were the way they are what you do that you don't like what you do that you do like that you do you know all these things and and that's a that's a really positive um process to have you know i used to think that you were just ridiculously particular and, you know, when you would comment like, ah, oh, there's another woman driving the car, you know, driving the whole family or the man's in the passenger seat or... When did I all, ever say that? All of what, <laughs> what seemed like pet peeves. Yeah. And, and now that I've been, well, married for over 20 years and seen enough of the culture shift also and hearing, you know, other podcast programs you know basically hearing other people's points of view I'm like okay John was really on it years ago you know you you called it years ago you know about the the sitcoms and how they would always put down the dad you know or the the lead male role and well if there was no reason for it you know I mean if people are if somebody does something silly and they're in a situation where they can you know, somebody could tease them for it and they could go, oh yeah, that was silly, that was stupid, I, uh, you know, that kind of thing. But when it's just constant berating, mm -hmm. you know, the kid comes in and asks the dad something and the mom takes over and gives the answer and, and then the dad goes, well, and the mom goes, Shh, you know, and that kind of, I mean, it's just like, yeah, I, I never got into too many sitcoms anyway, but I, I saw it, you know, and I saw it in people and I heard it and. You know, like, I didn't like Saturday Night Live. I didn't like the Seinfeld show. Uh, I didn't like the show Friends. Uh, the only one I did watch was uh, Three's Company when I was younger. And didn't really like all that either. I mean, it was funny. You know, Jack Ritter was a pretty funny guy. Um, and Suzanne Somers was pretty good looking. So <laughs> it was on that tail end of the, the hot blondes from the 70s into the 80s, you know? Mm -hmm. So it was like... Fair faucets. Yeah, well, there's only one fair faucet. You can't say the fair faucets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unless she was Superwoman. Or Wonder Woman, sorry. Wonder Woman. That's Linda Carter. Yeah, but she had dark hair. So she was the, the dark-haired... No. No? No. Doesn't count? No. No. I'm totally not the same. Only one fair faucet. Yeah. No, I mean just like that era, right? But there's different kind of. She was okay. She didn't have the greatest body. She, you know, she's a nice lady, pretty, and but she was then again, you know, that everyone was trying to look for the strong woman, you know, that encouraged women to get into the workforce and to <clears throat> accomplish and be be everything. I think women just need to be women. Men just need to be men. You know, I notice about women of that era too is, you know, you listen to Farrah Fawcett talk, or that era of woman. Nowadays, they don't necessarily talk that way, even the same woman, but their voice was a little more like this. And I wonder sometimes if it was real, <laughs> if they really spoke like that. <laughs> what do you think? Maybe they didn't have thick vocal cords from screaming. Maybe. <laughs> screaming at their mom and screaming at their dad and <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Didn't yeah. think of that, did you? <laughs> it it was well I do think different generations have different ways of speaking. I mean you can even hear it when you hear old recordings. Right? I think women need to pay attention to their softer side. They need to pay attention to, you know, the the determination in their voice, right? I think there should be more of a lighter sound from a woman. Let me 
know what you think of this. So this goes into a little bit of my own fears and insecurities, but I'm going to try to keep it non-personal. Okay. So it's kind of the chicken or the egg kind of thing, where yeah. I know that some big shifts started happening for me when I had the epiphany of having faith and trust, first of all, in God. And if you can do that, it trickles down into other things in life. Yeah. And I do think that that is true in general, that mm -hmm. women, when you learn to be faithful and trusting, and I do think it starts with God, then it trickles down to your husband and other things in life. The catch is, the caveat is that you you also have to shift at the same time what your expectations are out of life. Because if you're like, God, I'm going to have faith and therefore in you and therefore in my husband that uh, we're going to win the lottery. I mean, that's just, <laughs> maybe that that's too outrageous to even think of. But maybe even in what what is I think expected in today's world and I can't even throw out an example I'm sure you'll come up with one and so so it, much pressure it's so so I think it's it's the chicken or the egg kind of thing does does the guy provide the examples of being trustworthy you know like he, he can provide how he's going to handle a difficult situation you know or does the woman have to be trustworthy trusting and faith have faith in her husband first because a woman you know we've talked before in the podcast about naturally being more neurotic you know on in the big five personality traits you know that jordan peterson talks about and is is in clinical psychology and m women are statistically more neurotic just like they they tend to worry more is maybe a way of, of illustrating it's that. the basic way of saying it so, you know, does to have a healthy, balanced relationship, does a woman have to control her neuroticism first and more, or does a man have to actually show that he's trustworthy and not upset? I see it as a nest, right? Because the female species, the female of many species, you know, you think about a bird and they do the mating dance and she qualifies the man and then they build a nest and sometimes he has to build a nest and she will re you she'll accept it or deny it right <laughs> and you know it might just be a little oh there's a little poke there you know that's that's not good enough and so i think there's <sighs> there's correlative right to, to, to well the human first of species. all we're not birds <clears throat> we're not birds yeah. that's what i'm saying second of all i did dance for you yeah, you did. <laughs> and I had an apartment, so I had a nest where you could move into because you did that. Um, but there's there's the, you know, for some women, a place is enough. You know, her standards might be higher. And what if she's just mm. like, oh, that's not good enough, you know, or. Yeah, of course. Or you're not providing enough or regularly of course, enough. There are women that will say that, especially the 40 year olds that are single and looking for a man. They're like qualifying how much money is in your bank account, how much, how big is your house, what kind of car do you drive, do you have insurance, are you, what life insurance do you have, what, you know, all these things. And uh, that's okay. Those, maybe those people are more like birds. <laughs> well, I'm saying this because this is something I've actually had to go through thinking, are my standards too high? Am I being too picky? You know, like there's a little poke in the nest when it's, you know, not that big of a deal. Hmm. Yeah, well, we live in a society where people can pick up their phone, they can look at everybody else's lifestyle, and most people are looking at life through the lenses of lack. They're looking at life as, I don't have that. I wish I could have this. I want more of this, right? Instead of, I have this and I'm grateful, and I can produce this so that I can get this, and I'm glad I have that skill and that capability and that understanding. And, you know, it's, it's society sets us up for competition. That's why one of the reasons why I'm so against um, these parents having their kids in all these sports is they're, they're constantly competing, right? And life is not competition. Life is partially the avoidance of suffering, 
through multiple means by like literally outright avoiding right like there's an accident i'm going to turn right on this road and go around it you know instead of driving up to it and then having to sit and wait or there's somebody up there throwing rocks at cars so i'm going to turn down this road instead of like i'm gonna go take care of that little son bitch you know it's like you can get off the road you can avoid right you can he head in straight on and head it off at the pass and try and deal with it you could try and get some some call somebody to get somebody else to deal with it um and i think most people are reacting instead of being proactive right um some people watching this podcast might be reacting to something in life that they need to take care of they didn't know how they listen to us they go that's a good idea find out i need to have confidence in myself so other people have confidence in me um Proving that a man, a man proving he's trustworthy is something he does every day. It's it's never done. A woman true proving that she's faithful is something that's done every day. It's never done. Um, it's never you're never finished. You've never arrived at this point where you're completely trustworthy and completely loyal, right? It's it's instance by instance, day by day, and so you can't put like this massive thing on it and if somebody proves themselves otherwise then you want them to be or you need them to be to be in a relationship with you then you have a decision to make and most people are afraid of decisions they're afraid of the thought process that's going to go behind come behind having to make a really tough decision right because they won't ever know if they're making the right decision that's why I just say you make the right decisions all the time and then you don't have to worry about it you know, it's it's relatively that simple. So, um, you know, I was your best option at the time, thankfully. Good, good for me, right? Um, and if a guy wants to find a woman, he needs to put himself in a situation where he is the best option for multiple females in the environment, so that he can then find somebody that he wants to maybe court date figure out if they want to be together and you know that's i mean if i was right now if i was going to go look for a woman i wouldn't go to some 25 year old billionaire's yacht and hang out with all the 20 to 30 year old women that are trying to get that guy that's not where i would go mm -hmm. <laughs> that would you know i financially i would come short my age would bring me up short my knowledge would probably be beyond in most areas but if he's got more money in me he's probably got more knowledge about one thing that he's made money in right and maybe multiple things uh and so i couldn't compete with that 25 year old right so i'd be foolish to go there to pretend like i'm thinking like oh you know maybe one of these chicks will get drunk enough to go home with me and you know <laughs> <laughs> that that'd be a really really bad idea right so Putting yourself in the right environment to win is is generally uh, comes with knowledge and maturity. But if you get a mentor, if you get into a course, or if you talk to somebody, or if you have a dad or an uncle or somebody you can talk to, uh, and then you know stay stay in your in your level or maybe slightly above, you know, and or maybe slightly below. You know, it's, you know, if, if you know, let's say you got a group of friends, <clears throat> you got five friends and you're the middle of all those friends, right? That's what they say. Go hang out with your two lesser friends and tell them to have a party, invite a bunch of women. There's going to be women there that look at you and go, wow, he's way better than these other guys, <laughs> you know, and, and then be the best guy that you can be. You know, I mean, it's that simple, you know, mating strategy is not difficult. It's the decisions we make that make it difficult. You know, and nobody's ever gonna get everything that I have always wanted. This earth is meant for us to, to work towards what we want, struggle a little bit, hopefully not continue to struggle because we make good decisions and to keep moving forward. And we're reaching for higher attainment in, in our knowledge, in our emotional range, in our spiritual pursuits, 
and hopefully in our relationships and in our life and the environment around us. What would have been some deal breakers for you? Like, do you think it's essential that that people come from the same religious background, political standpoint? No, because I was Lutheran and you were Catholic. <laughs> Holy so, crap. so far off. I came from the pedophile church. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so it's not a deal breaker. No, I, I, no. I mean more like, okay, Christian. I mean, there are some Christian sects that are like... Christian is sex it? is awesome. Um, <laughs> I never went out with a Muslim. I've never gone out with a, a Jew. Uh, I've never gone out with a Pentecostal. <laughs> no. <laughs> a Baptist, no way. No. I don't, I, you know, I don't know. I, I never... Inter- I know I didn't go out with any of those religions because they would have been it would have been a stark difference, right? But yeah. I never interviewed anybody about their you know, I never asked you what you were. Yeah, I mean in our area it's especially at that time is you were some form of Christian, probably Lutheran or Catholic. Potentially. In these areas. Maybe Baptist. Potentially. Maybe maybe non denominational. I never went out with Jehovah's Witness. Never went out with a Hutterite. You could have. Could have. Probably could have. Ah, no. They, I was probably not German enough. Because I'm, I'm almost 100% Norwegian. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what if I had been, like, just totally a... Well, maybe I am a total liberal. You don't know. You asked me that the other day if I... I didn't really ask you that either. I didn't care. Why would I care? Why would well, I care I what your political opinions are? You're a woman. <laughs> <laughs> I can assume that you think the wrong thing automatically. That just making a short. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, yep, good one. <laughs> Touche. No, true. I'm I'm not having political discussions with anybody. You know. Oh wow, something really bit me. It just and left and left it bloody. Huh. Wow. Here I have. Get back. I have a napkin. Thank you. I am here to save the day. <laughs> well, th- there could be a point where, you know, if someone's really, I mean, I, I wasn't. I, it would have been very apparent right away if you were going to try and make sure that I was following your, your ideas and your ideals and that kind of thing. And, and you would have run up against a, a massive brick wall with a, with a, with a, a computer in the wall like an ATM that could answer all your questions and give you more insights and and define everything for you. So I wasn't afraid. I was I was very at when I met you I was extremely knowledgeable on many, many, many things. You know, I had spent years and years and years reading and, and studying and, and learning and all the things that I was doing and, and, and then some. You know? You know, I think that hypergamy gets a really bad rap, you know, that men, women are always looking for the, the better man. But I think it's, it, it's actually brilliant in a way because... You got all the bugs today. Yeah. Because if, if I didn't find a man that much better than me, as you are, just knowledgeable life experience, capabilities... Well, yeah, let's say I, more experience. You... That's attractive to women. But I think it's also essential because as we've gone through our life, you've always, in your own desire to stay knowledgeable, up to date on things, it, it has to outpace the woman's. And so, because that's how she keeps looking up to him and keeps respecting him. Of course it's a choice, but if a woman doesn't aim that much higher, he, he basically has to have a big jump start in life well, I think if you said I'm getting into um, crooked basket weaving crochet with with uh, uh, rattan covers I'm not gonna go try to learn that shit and be like oh I need to be better than her at that I'll say good and if you come to me and say you don't understand the cross stitch up down weave I'm gonna go you're right I mean, and I guess you, you speak I, multiple languages. I don't. That doesn't take away from me. That doesn't. That adds to you, and that adds to us. And that's that's my. That's the way I see things, right? 
if you're good at something, you've become really good at business and much better at business than you were many years ago because you didn't do any business. Now you're knowledgeable. Now you can run a business. That adds to us. It doesn't take away from me. Right, but One. you're still that much more capable. When it comes to basket weaving, that's unless we are in a survival mode, it doesn't matter. But the things that matter in life, you are that much more further ahead than I am. You know, if we had to survive, we were traveling and doing a traveling show and it relied on my language, that would be a it different... It would only matter if we would compare. And I'm not ever going to compare myself to you. If you want to compare yourself to me, that's your problem. <laughs> right? It is. Right? And, I mean, if, if I'm going to gauge if I'm going to gauge myself based upon you being good at languages, I'm I'm a failure. Right? I So, I'm not going, well, I need to make sure that, you know, I'm I'm better at languages, you know. Do you can you say padalele pipido? That's Brazilian for cobblestone. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's Portuguese language, Brazilian though. It's Brazilian Portuguese. Yeah. So, are, do you want, I mean, I'm not living my life like that. Right. Oh, I played volleyball, you know, with my well, we're not wife and we competed and she beat me. Now I feel like less of a man. Well, we're not I, in competition. Yeah, that, that's, that's what they're breeding kids for now, right? That's what I said, all these parents taking their kids to all these sports, the kids are constantly competing. You got another flag. Yeah, I'm yeah. all about it. Yeah, I got to get myself some more flags. Yeah. See, I do it, you talk about it. Yeah, well, I, <laughs> believe it or not, I My actually am not, am not a big purchaser, but like when I'm actually <laughs> looking for something. So, but I think that's the point. We're not in competition. And although I'm comparing now, it's under the, the question of, or, or the assessment of hypergamy. And I think, I think there's a, a very sound reason, even though I think it's part of our, our natural way of being as women, I think there's sound reasoning behind See, it. See, I think that's made up. I don't think guys should be trying to learn all these new pop cultures. We were talking about it in the car a little bit, and I said, I'm not going to adapt myself to this millennial Gen X, Gen Z, whatever they are now, bullshit language. That They're changing the English language so they, so we sound like them or they can say something different than we say. I don't care. I don't care about red pill. I don't care about what shit testing. I don't care about all these pop terms I could give a shit I speak the English language and it, it doesn't change and if if society at large decides to change it I'm probably not going to change it because I learned it I could read when I went to kindergarten <laughs> you know I'm like I already read it you know and I read the dictionary when I was 14 so, in my, we had encyclopedias. I read all the cycle, the, the entire encyclopedia. Uh, what do you call it? Vol, the, all the volumes that we had. Yeah. <clears throat> so, we didn't have internet when I was a kid. That was the internet. <laughs> you know, you went to the library, you got books. You went to the bookstore, you read books for free, and then you put them back on the shelf. And I'd sit there all day. And I'm not playing these games. I'm not. I don't play games. I'm living my life. I'm not trying to understand what people are saying about women. You know, the hypergamy and the and the you know the the neuroticism and the and okay, it's just a matter of fact, that's fine. Do you think that relationships need to go back to quote what they used to be where the the man was the sole bread winner and the woman was at home and doing her thing, or do you think we are? We so we're have in con to, we're in control of that. Or do we have to, or it's past that point, and we have to just have this symbiosis of. What we're we in con we're in control of it, right? So we don't, as a society, we can't go back to anything because we're not changing society. If you and me want me to work and you to be at home all day, so that you can what, make me a sandwich. I mean, I'm not saying you have to work, but you do work right now. You own a business that you run out of the, out of the home. I mean, you get the perfect scenario. You work off your computer at home. Pretty damn simple. I mean, a lot of complex stuff going on, but you don't have to drive somewhere. You don't have to meet with a board. You don't have to ask a CEO if you can do stuff or a manager you're dealing with. You don't have a manager above you that's hitting on you going, Oh, Terry, you look really nice today. And you're like, what the fuck do I say to that? You know? 
dude, I look nice every day. I, I, I make myself look nice so I can come to work so that people don't notice me. And every day I show up looking nice, you notice me. Don't bother me anymore. <laughs> you know, you don't, have to, you don't have to deal with any of that, right? I mean... Just when you come upstairs. I come and... up, I turn off the webcam, I make you get undressed. Yeah. <laughs> At least you make me turn off the webcam before That's we do right. That. Well, yeah. we probably could make a lot of money. But anyway, so, you know, I, I'm not... I'm, we're doing things differently. If we want to do things differently, we make a choice in our relationship, and that's for everybody. That's for everybody. If people want to go back to the husband working and the wife staying home with the kids, then make your lifestyle that way, right? Live in a small rambler's, rambler that was built in the 60s and, and drive a Toyota Camry for 15 years save all your money put it into your food and your home and your whatever you want to do but make sure that you're you know making enough money to support your family and Grow have a garden. single income and nowadays you could have a you could have other streams of income online doesn't have to be only fans could be you know reselling or <laughs> amazon affiliate <laughs> or whatever you know or you know so I'm, many ways. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying you know so you know it's there's multiple ways to make money, you know, you can, yeah. and you can work from home nowadays. There's a lot of that. So, um, I don't, I don't see the problems, you know, I never have, I've always gone after what I want and done what I want to do. And, you know, if I change my mind, I change my mind. I don't check with the latest YouTube videos on how to think. You know, nobody should check with us on how to think. They should come up with their own way. If they're having trouble and they feel like they need to add to themselves and get rid of a few strategies that are not working, that's fine. But it doesn't mean that you spend the next 20 years listening to John and Tara on how to run your life. You know, at some point, you're going to have enough principles to run your own life and you got to figure it out. And you probably already do. You're just not making the correct decisions in proper timing and you're going to make mistakes. Life is about making mistakes and life is about figuring things out. Are there any questions you have for me that has just been, you've just been burning questions. Yeah. Burning questions. Not at all. <laughs> burning comments. Uh, no, no. Pokes, prods. No, nothing. Why? You think I'm competing with you? No, because I keep asking questions of you. Oh. I'm just wondering if we might turn no. the table a little bit. No, I'll never compete with you. I'll never purposely irritate you. I'll never do anything to hurt you on purpose. Okay, maybe yep. not purposely irritate, but definitely to to kind of egg on a bit. I love teasing you, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. That was so funny. But I don't play and practical that, jokes on you. In a meeting with um, my contractors one time, you, you popped in. You pop in every once in a while. Um, you're you're the absent CEO, and you just come in when when needed or to bless us with your presence. And you were teasing me, and I, I said to our one male contractor, I said, "You never tease your wife, you know." And he's like, "Ah." No, he said every day. Every day. Every day. It's <laughs> <laughs> like totally guy like. Yeah. Like yeah. just like I love it. <laughs> yeah. Right. Love the reaction. <laughs> What is it? What, so tell us, what is it about? It's the giggle. You're just sitting here yeah. giggling about it. <laughs> I love making you laugh. Yeah. You don't laugh as hard at anything that you laugh at when you're with me or when you're laughing at something that I've said or done. And there's a specialness in that. And that that is like comfort food. Mm. You know, that's like the... It's, it's a reason. It's a reason for things, right? And it's something that I get from you, you know, it's special. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yep, it's your treats, <laughs> right? Yeah, you can call it that. Yeah. Should we wrap it up? Yeah, I think that was a good one. All right. Good stuff. Take care, everybody. Subscribe. Bye. Share with your friends.